So we will go through verses 8 through 20 of Surah Baqarah. So verse number 8 is, who are, now who are Anas? Anas are the people. Anas means everybody. It's Muslims, non-Muslims, believers, disbelievers, everybody. Right? So this verse is going to be talking about the third kind of people. Who is, anybody knows what the third kind of people is? We talked about the Muttaqeen. We talked about the Kafirin. And the third kind is? Hypocrites, Munafikeen. So this, all, all verses 8 through 20, only they talk about are the Munafikeens. Who are the Munafiks? And this is something we need to be very, very careful of. Now, Munafikeens are the people, they all say they believe in Allah. And they also believe in the last day. So imagine that. Munafikeen can be any one of us. And we will see how. But we need to be very, very careful of not being a Munafik. Because a Munafik believes in Allah, and a Munafik also believes in the last day of judgment. But they still are not believers. They are not Muttaqeen. They are only Munafikeen. Now, Anas, people, mankind. This verse is again for all of those. And again, we will be looking at who the Munafikeens are. Now, when we take a look at this, a moment on the, on the left side of the screen has a clean heart. The Kafir is obviously a disbeliever. He doesn't believe in anything. But the Munafik, on the outside, he might be a believer, but his heart is not a believing heart. He does not believe in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says or asks us to do. And this is something we need to be very, very careful of. So, Al-Nifaq huwa izharul khairi wa israr al shar Hypocrisy is of two types. Hypocrisy is in, in your belief and hypocrisy can also be in deeds and actions, right? We may do something but not really do something. And then similarly, we may believe something but not really believe in it. So hypocrisy, I want you to write this down in your books. Hypocrisy is of two types. In belief and in deeds and actions. Okay. Now, how did, the, how did the hypocrisy begin? The hypocrisy did not begin in the first 13 years of when Rasulullah was in Makkah. It began when he came to Medina. In Makkah, there were only people who were believers, but who were hiding their belief because they were just afraid of the people, of the disbelievers around them. But when they came to Medina is when they started talking about munafikins. Again, this is Basically, um, you know, it talks about um, there were three tribes in Medina at the time. Uh, the tribe, um, uh, you know, Banu Kanka, uh, Banu, Banu Khazraj, and Banu al Nadir. Um, and these were basically were tribes uh, of, of Jews um, who, were, uh, who were basically, um, uh, you know, had aligned with Os and Khazraj. Os and Khazraj were another two tribes. Um, in Medina at the time. And Abdullah bin Ubay, who has heard of the name of Abdullah bin Ubay before, he was going to be nominated as the leader of two tribes. But when Rasulullah came to Medina, <clears throat> he was not named the chief after that. And he had this in his heart all the time. He, because he wanted to be the chief, he did not become the chief at the end. Um, and he became a Muslim but he became a Munafik because he believed, but he didn't really believe in everything that was being said, right? Um, and <coughs> what we need to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ They think they will deceive Allah. But then Allah continues on in the verse and says, they're only deceiving themselves. Because when you try to, when you try to do something, and you think that Allah is not going to notice it? That is not the case. Allah is an observer on each one of us. What we need to understand is that if you, if each one of us, even sitting here right now, is not being true to Allah, you are studying Allah's words right now, 
right? If we are not true to Allah, how can you be true to anybody? That questions, you know, how can you be true to anybody who is around you either? Because if you're not true to being true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we need to be is we need to be sincere. And we need to make sure that um, we are not called amongst the people who are called the munafikins. And in another surah, in Surah Munafikun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically talks about when the hypocrites come to you, they will say that we bear witness that you indeed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are the messenger. But then Allah bears witness that those hypocrites are liars. Think about it. I mean, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bearing witness to people as liars. This is no joke, right? We need to take this really seriously and need to think about are we, are we falling amongst that category or not? This is a question that needs to be at the back of our mind constantly for each one of us. Are we being munafikin? You know, the, uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who, who knows about Umar radiallahu ta'ala right? He was, a, he was obviously one of the very, very famous Sahabi, one of the people of Ashra and Mubashra, who was told that he will be guaranteed Jannah, right? He always said, if one of my feet is in Jannah, if my other feet is outside of Jannah, I will still not believe that I will go to Jannah. He was guaranteed Jannah in this life, right? Where are we? How, why, if we think we are going to go to Jannah because we help somebody, right? But we are not being true to everything else that we do. How can we think of our, ourselves as somebody who is on the path to Jannah? That's a question we need to be asking ourselves. So there are three signs of hypocrites. And I want you to write this down also. Three signs of hypocrites. Whenever he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. When he is trusted, he betrays his, his trust. So these are the qualities of hypocrites. Three qualities of hypocrites. And we need to be again asking ourselves, is any of that quality in me or not? Right? We need to be making sure that we are staying true to ourselves. And we need to make sure that we are not telling, we are not lying to ourselves. We need to be true to our own selves for the betterment of ourselves. We should not be deceived by the people around us who may be acting like that also. And we should not be deceiving ourselves either. Why people lie, cheat and deceive others, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and the life of the world deceives them. It is the life in this world, in this, in this world, people want to get the worldly gains, I'm going to get this benefit and that benefit. And that is why they lie and cheat and hurt people. But we should not be amongst those. It should not be something that people should be saying about us that we are amongst those. Verse number 10. Fi So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, in their hearts is a disease. What is the disease? The disease is the nifaq that they have in their heart, which is part belief, part disbelief. Right? And that is something we need to avoid for ourselves is we need to make sure we are always telling the truth of whatever we do. Now, another place in, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically says, and whenever there comes down a surah chapter from the Quran, some of them hypocrites say, which of you had this faith increased by it? Right? Remember, you know, when, when somebody tells you, you know, let's go pray salah. And then we say, oh, you know, later we'll get to it. Another five, 10 minutes, another 15 minutes. Let me finish this game. Let me finish this work that I'm doing. And this applies to any one of us, even the adults, right? Are we falling in that category or not? That's a constant question we need to be asking ourselves. So lying, what, what, what are the qualities of, um, you know, a healthy heart? So what we need to understand is, is that a healthy heart is filled with love for Allah, right? A hypocrite chooses his fate himself by being rebellious. And if we find ourselves being dishonest to people around us, we need to be questioning, are we on the right track or not? 
We need to make sure we are keeping our hearts clean. And we need to cure our hearts of any spiritual diseases, which obviously is listed upon on the slide. I'm not going to go through all of that. But we need to be making sure that we, any of these causes is something we are not, we don't have in our lives, in, in the actions that we do. And we need to be, uh, Prophet Muhammad said, be aware in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the whole body is sound. And if it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt and it is the heart. You know, people can have a heart attack, perfectly healthy people can have a heart attack and they can die instantly. So heart is so central to everything. It is not only central to our living in this world, it is central to our living in the hereafter as well, as long as we are keeping it clean. One dua that we should certainly try to memorize is Allahumma tahir qalbi min al nifaq And I want you to at least write down the meaning of it, which is, Oh Allah, purify my heart of hypocrisy. That's a dua that we need to be asking after every salah for, for ourselves with the understanding that what is it that we are asking for, right? So I want you to write down this dua in your books. It's, Oh Allah, purify my heart of hypocrisy. Okay. So the, the sound heart is the one that is filled with the remembrance of Allah. And the sick heart is the one that doubts anything that Allah says. Even one thing that you're going to doubt from Allah makes us a munafiq because we are now saying maybe Allah did not reveal it. Maybe Allah didn't say that. Maybe it meant something else. And that starts bringing the nifaq in our heart. So verse number 11. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ Why does corruption happen in this world? Corruption happens for money, for power, for politics, for policy, for having that ability to, to, uh, to have that impact that people want, but it is in the wrong direction. You know, corruption causes all of this. And we, again, we need to be making sure that as we look at things around us, we are standing up for things which are wrong and standing up for things which are right. As a Muslim, who is a giver? This is sort of a cycle of corruption. You know, people, they give with corrupt intent. You know, the receivers, they are doing favors to other people. And this is a big cycle. And we need to break this cycle. This is what, you know, the picture down below is showing is that we need to be the ones breaking the cycle. We should not allow that cycle to continue. How many of you have seen pictures like these? Right? All kinds of destruction that is happening around the world. And people say we are all doing it for peace because of X, Y, and Z reasons. Right? We need to be able to look through some of those things. We need to be able to understand what is right and what is wrong in the light of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah inna hum humul mufsiduna wala killa la yushurun. And people who are the corruptors, they think they are not. They think they are the ones who are rightly guided. But Allah again is telling us that they are the ones who are the corrupt. And the message of the Quran is, is that we should not be causing mischief in this world. We should be bringing peace and harmony to the world we live in, not causing it to be the other way around. Verse number 13, And when you go and tell them, believe, they say, do, should we believe like the fools around us who believe? That's a, that's a rhetorical question that the Munafikins are asking to the people who come and preach to them. Are we asking, are we saying that to somebody, if somebody calls us for Salah, right? Are we telling them, are you really going for Salah, man? Why don't we delay it for like another 10 minutes? Why don't we finish this ex this thing first? Right? Are we being one of those people? That's a question we need to be asking. When you're playing a basketball game and somebody comes and says, you know, let's go and maybe, you know, pray, pray or read something from the Quran. Are we telling them, don't worry about it. We'll do it tomorrow. Right? That's a question we need to be asking our own selves. Surah Baqarah, Allah, verse number 13, continuing, Allah inna hum humu sufahu, sufahau, wala killa ya'labun. And it is, they are the ones who are the fools. This is again, verse coming from Allah. Allah is declaring 
the belief the munafiqeen to be the people who are the fools themselves who think that they are making fools out of others but they are not fooling anybody but themselves verse number 14 wa iza lakul ladina amanu qalu amanna wa iza khalaw ila shayatinihim qalu inna ma'akum inna ma mustahzirun and when they meet those who would disbelieve they say we believe but they are alone with their evil ones they say indeed we are with you are we in a state where we tell a friend that i am truly a friend of yours but then go and talk to somebody else and they say i was just kidding with him i didn't mean what i was saying do we do that that's a question we need to be asking ourselves right sometimes kids can do that in you know as joking you also but this is not a joke right because we are causing ourselves to go in a completely different direction what we also need to understand is that um there were people who basically wanted to assassinate rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam once gave the names of 14 hypocrites to a sahabi because allah revealed to him that there are people who are going to be coming and would try to kill him and you know again many sahaba including umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to go up to that sahabi and used to ask him is my name amongst them now think about it this is somebody who was guaranteed jannah in this world i mean what else would you want if you are guaranteed jannah in this world he used to go and question and ask was is my name amongst them that's a question to be asking is if those people were so concerned about getting to jannah are we that much concerned do we have that at the back of our mind always that whatever am i doing is that taking me closer to jannah or is that taking me away from jannah because we can sometimes laugh all about it but at the end of the day we see people dying around us all day long people die there are young people who die too right we want to die in a state of iman not in a state where we are questioning things from allah subhanahu wa taala so next time when someone tells you that you take islam too seriously say alhamdulillah i do because it is not a joke your iman is not a joke that is going to to guarantee you your life in the hereafter what's the prophecy allah yastaziu bihim wa yamudduhum fi tuyanihim ya'mamun and allah basically says that allah mocks them who mocks who the munafiqin and prolongs in them in their transgression while they wander blindly you know sometimes we question why do bad things happen in the world right why allah is uh, why allah is punishing some people and sometimes allah is not punishing people because he want those people to transgress more and more so they can be punished more at the end so if if we do something wrong if we do something wrong and if you are if you are able to get away once with it don't think that you were able to get away with it if it was something that you think was wrong in your heart because it could be that allah may be just giving you a chance to either repent or increase more in your transgression and we don't want to be those people who are increasing in, in the transgression right we don't want to be yamudduhum right we don't we don't want to be the people who are being stretched who are thinking that you know they they will not be punished verse number 16 ulaika allazina ashtaru dalalata bil huda fama rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadin and these are the people who have purchased in who have purchased in exchange for guidance misguidance so that they can their transaction has brought no profit to them and nor were they guided we need to make sure that we are living the life in this world without any kind of a deception because there are too many things that would take you away from how we should be living on the day of judgment all of us are going to be crossing a bridge and that's just one part of the of many steps to get to jannah and we want to make sure that we are not the ones who are the ones who falling down in the pit of the hellfire right because it's a very 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 thin string 
It's a razor sharp. You may have heard of this before, but it is true, right? If you pinch yourself, pinch yourself, just pinch yourself. Pinch yourself. Wearing a jacket, that's okay, it may not pinch you that hard. But if you pinch yourself, it is reality. It is not a joke, right? It is not something that is in dreams. It can, it should, it should allow us to think about our actions. Verse number 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their example is that of one who is kindled a fire but when illuminated that was around him, Allah took away their light and left them in darkness so they could not see. Um, what would happen to you if you lit a fire in darkness and all of a sudden the fire just went away? You will be left in darkness. You would not know where you are at. If you go into your room at night and it is all dark and you turn the light off, you're not able to see things around you. Now, if you stay in the light, right, for like 30 seconds, your eyes get used to it. But for the munafikeen on the day of judgment, that's not going to happen. They will not get any light. And again, Allah has basically likened the hypocrites that when they bring deviation, they are getting blind in the things that they do. And again, we want to make sure that we are not amongst those people. Summum bukmun umyun fahum la yarji'oon, which means deaf, dumb and blind, so they will not return to the right path. If you become deaf, dumb and blind, would you be able to do anything? Probably not, because you can't see, you can't hear, right? And you can't see, right? So deaf, dumb and blind. So we need to make sure that it is truly it is not in, in the eyes that get blind, but the hearts. So it is the heart that needs to be able to make the difference between the right and the wrong. We need to make sure the path to Jannah is not a straight line. It has curves in it. But depending on the path we choose is going to decide the fate that we will end up with. We can either take the road for Allah Zina Kafiru, or we can take the road for Allah Zina Amanu wa Amilu Salihat. It is a conscious decision that each one of us makes every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is like a rainstorm from the sky within which darkness, thunder, and lightning they will put their fingers in their ears, right? Because when you hear the thunderstorm, sometimes it's so loud that you want, you, you almost get to the point of putting fingers in your ears. If the voice is so loud. And Allah is going to be, uh, Allah is going to be punishing the disbelievers at that point. Now, zulumatu means darkness. Waradu means thunder. Yahsabuna kulla sayhata alayhim. This is another um, uh, word, part of another verse from another surah, which basically may, means they will think that it is a cry against them. And bark is basically lightning. And verse number 20 basically talks about that the lightning is going to snatch their, their eyes away, their sight away. They would not be able to see anymore. What we need to do is, we need to make sure that we are entering Islam completely. Islam is not a buffet where you can pick and choose whatever you want. You don't get to say, I will do this, but I will not do that. And because the people who do that, who make it a buffet, are the people who are falling under the category of munafiqeen. They're accepting what they want, but they don't accept what they don't like. And we don't want to be people like those who are amongst that category. So, I want you to write this down as a check. Do I believe with my tongue and my heart? That's the question that each one of us should be asking. Do I make fun of Islam? When people talk about Islam, am I making fun of it? When somebody is telling me something that came from Allah or that came from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, do I make fun of it saying, oh, you know, it's maybe, you know, that was 1400 years ago. It, it isn't true anymore today. Do I try to deceive those around, around you or do you, or do I try to deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
you know another thing of some you know another thing that we can probably think about it in this context is we have gadgets today everybody has gadgets today right sometimes what kids might do is that you know you can make folders on your phone and you can put more apps and things in that folder and, and you're trying to you know categorize them right are we being munafiq if we are calling the folder name quran and putting something within that folder that we shouldn't be doing thinking that if somebody looks at our phone they will just look at the folder quran and they will think there is nothing in there do you think believers are foolish people do you think people who try to try to follow islam completely are fools or they're not doing things something they're not following things properly did i make a smart trade of guidance versus misguidance that's a question that again each one of us should be asking on a daily basis for all of us so the homework for next week is going to be again you are questions bottom of the page you are going to write down inshallah your favorite ayah of the ayahs that we study a lesson that you think you are going to take away from these verses 8 to 20 on that page that you're on okay so we need to write down the favorite gem and we need to think and reflect on what is it that we want to take away for each one of us inshallah and as a quick reminder please make sure you are also filling out the weekly goal tracker that is at the end of the book inshallah right jazakumullah khair assalam